Uh, hi everyone, uh, this is Jitendra Peswani this side. I'm a CFA charter holder and I work as a head faculty at FPI Edutech, uh, where I train students on the CFA course. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the CFA program and how we can prepare in such a manner that we are able to ace the exam in the first attempt. So let's start uh, with a quick overview of the CFA course. So CFA is an international qualification in the field of finance and investment. So if you are someone who is looking to make a career in the field of finance, then definitely CFA can be one of the best option. Uh, the course is offered by the CFA Institute US and it is recognized in more than 167 plus countries. Uh, there's a huge opportunities in the Indian financial market. So. Uh, if you look at the growth rate of the mutual fund industry, if you look at the number of people participating in the financial market, that has been going up. So that is why we can we can see there's a huge opportunities for a lot of young professionals like you to make a career in the field of finance. So that is where uh, doing a globally recognized course like a CFA can help you build a great career. So the course, uh, the CFA course is considered as the gold standard certification. Uh, in the field of finance and investment management. So this is a broad overview about the CFA course. Uh, what are some of the career opportunities that you can get once you complete your CFA? Uh, so with CFA, uh, it can help you to get a core finance jobs. Uh, you can start working in the investment banking in the core roles. It can help you to get uh, make a career in the field of equity research. You can start working as a corporate finance analyst, as a financial analyst. It can also help you to make a career in the field of portfolio management, equity research. So being very honest, in CFA, you get trained on multiple things. Uh, so there are a lot of career opportunities that opens up on for you based on the interest. So we have some students working in the risk management, some students working in the asset management, some of them working in the wealth management. But uh, you would see a lot of opportunities uh, post completing your CFA. So when, when I talk about uh, the CFA course, when I talk about the CFA course, so CFA course has three levels. So when I talk about the CFA course, it has three levels, level one, level two, and level three. So to become a CFA, you need to pass all the levels, level one, level two, level three. You need to have a relevant work experience as well. Now, uh, one very good thing about the CFA course. Uh, see, in most courses, what happens? You pass the final certification only then you would see a significant value addition in your career but that is not the case with cfa as soon as you pass level one as soon as you pass the level one of the cfa program you get digital badges and based on that you can start working in the industry so the very good thing about the cfa program is that there is as an year the entire value is at the end the value comes with each level. You pass level one, there will be value addition in your resume. You pass level two, there will be more value addition in your resume. So this is something a very good thing about uh, the CFA program. Uh, as soon as you start clearing levels, you would see good employment opportunities. You can see significant improvement um, in the monetary terms as well. Now, are you eligible for the CFA? So first of all, to do a CFA, uh, it's very important that you need to have an interest in finance and investments because that is where the expertise, that is where the specialization of the CFA program rise. Now, when I talk about the eligibility criteria, uh, the level one of the CFA program can be done 23 months before the graduation date. So let's take an example. If you are a student, if you are a student, let's say you are a student based out of India where we have a three year undergraduate degree. So 23 months before the graduation date. So at the start of second year itself, at the start of second year itself, you can give your level one of the CFA exam. So the earliest you can give the level one examination is in the second year. Obviously, you can register for the exam and start preparing for the first year onwards. To make it simple for you, anyone who is in the first year and onwards. So if you are first year, second year, third year, minimum being the first year, you should have started the first year. You can register for the CFA exam. You can start studying and immediately as you enter the second year, you can give your level one examination. 
for for most of the candidates let's take an example let's take an example you have passed your 12th and you have started your first year in the year 2023 and you are going to graduate in the year 2026 so let's say i am a student who have just started the first year now and i am going to get graduated in the year 2026 correct so 23 months before ideally uh, in india i would say may or june is what you get graduate so ideally you can target the 23 months before you can target the august 24 examination so anybody who is in the first year can very well start the preparation and can target the august 2024 examination so let me uh, help you with uh, so with cfa level one if you are in the first year you can start preparing you can register for the exam examination you can do in the next year level two in the last year the level two of the cfa program can be done in the last year of the graduation so similarly let's take an example i am a student pursuing a three-year undergraduate degree in the first year i register for level one i study for level one at the start of second year i give my level one and i pass in the second year itself i start preparing level two also register for the exam and at the start of third year itself i can give my level two that's a big achievement because uh, by the time you complete your graduation and uh, you had already completed a level two and you're preparing for level three that is something a big achievement in your career also uh, cfa being an international course uh, for your identification perspective a valid international passport is required at the time of registration also and when you're giving the exam also so when i talk about the level one examination so level one examination is conducted four times a year uh, in the month of february may august and november so level one examination is conducted in the month of feb may august and november your level two examination is conducted in the month of may august november and level three is conducted in the month of feb and august what are some of the subjects that you are going to study in your cfa so cfa has 10 different subjects so some of the subjects that you are going to learn uh, ethical and professional standard so as a CFA Institute focuses a lot on ethics because when you become an investment manager, you are going to handle people's money, correct? So it's very important as a investment professional, you are ethical. So CFA focuses a lot on the ethical standard and guys, uh, ethics is a very important subject to pass exam. Uh, we ask our students to at least practice at least 1500 questions on ethics because there is something known as the ethics adjustment in the exam so uh, when you give your cfa examination uh, cfa institute decides something known as a mps which is a minimum passing score so it think of it more like a cutoff so if you are someone who has scored about the mps congratulations you will pass the exam if you are someone who has scored below the M MPS, uh, unfortunately, you are not able to crack exam. Now, many a times what happened, there can be a lot of candidates which are near the MPS, like a borderline. Then, if you are someone who is very close to MPS, CFA Institute does something known as an ethics adjustment. So, if you are someone who has scored good marks in ethics, ethics will act in your favor and you can pass the exam. So if you are someone who is close to the MPS and you have scored very good marks in ethics, you can pass exam. But if you are someone who is very close to the MPS line, the minimum cutoff line, but you have scored bad marks in ethics, in that case, you will not be able to pass the exam. So one very important thing, ethics as a subject has one of the highest weightage. And apart from that, it plays a very important role in passing so definitely ethics is the most important subject then you have a quantitative methods as a finance as an investment manager you may be dealing with a lot of numbers how do you calculate different categories of returns how do you use the concept of probability how can we use the regression every statistics it's it's a subject which where we discuss about the statistics because that is very important when you are working in the investment management industry then we have another subject economics 
macro factors play a very important role in the investment management industry correct so how do you interpret the macro factors so everything about the economics is what we learn in this subject then there's a subject financial reporting analysis we also call financial statement analysis correct how do you read the financial statement cfa as a course does not focus on making the financial statement we are not an accountant we are an investment manager financial statements reading the annual reports how can we analyze income statement balance sheet cash flow statement how can i interpret the financial statements to make an investment decision so in detail about those you are going to learn in the subject financial statement analysis then you have another subject which is corporate finance so corporate finance as a subject deals with uh, raising money so any business needs to raise money should they do it via equity should they do via debt how do you minimize the cost of capital and where to invest money so for all the corporate finance decision everything is what you learn in the corporate finance then you learn about the asset classes so you learn about equity investment how do you value a stock how does stock valuation works how do you pick the right category of stocks similarly like equity markets we also get a in detail understanding on the fixed income markets how does the debt market work the valuation of debt market then we have a derivatives so it's an another financial assets where we learn about forward futures options then we learn about the alternative investments how do you invest in real estate how do you invest in hedge funds commodities how does investment in private equity venture capital works what is angel investing everything apart from equity that is what we learn in the alternative investments and then we have another subject which is portfolio management so you learned about equity you learn about fixed income derivatives ai correct but for a client you will be managing the money for a client you will be handling the entire portfolio correct so that is what you are going to learn in detail in the portfolio management and in level 3 of the cfa program you will see almost 40 50% of the syllabus just focusing on the portfolio management one question that i get how much time i need to pass cfa level 1 see how much time that you need to pass the cfa level 1 examination that is a factor of multiple things that is a factor of multiple things based on your past academic background based on your work experience see if you are someone who is already studied finance before or you are someone who is already working in the finance you may need a lesser time but if you are someone who is not from the finance background let's say you are from the technology background you are from the legal background you are from the arts background in that case obviously you will need a little more time so what is the ideal time i i personally recommend maybe uh to prepare level 1 to ensure you are passing the exam in the first month uh anywhere between 8 to 9 months is a reasonable amount of time to prepare so if you are starting now maybe you can target any exam attempt which is 8 to 9 months after so how how i generally tell you so let's say you are someone who is taking close to 9 months and being very honest if you are studying consistently 9 months are more than enough for your level 1 if you are someone who is a working professional and who, who has a time constraint definitely in 6 month also level 1 cracking level 1 is very much possible i have seen lot of my student able to pass in 5 5 and half month also but if you are someone who can take let's say 8 to 9 months definitely you should take it because not only your odds of or the chances of passing exam goes up but also it will help you to get your fundamentals correct in the level 1 so that it becomes easy for your level 2 So I personally recommend you break down your study initial six months and later three months. So let's say the journey of eight to nine months should be broken down. Uh, first, you have initial six months and then the last two or three months. Initial six months, the focus should be on conceptual understanding. The initial six months should be focused on conceptual understanding. Uh, the strategy that you should be following is record, uh, attend your live classes. so depending on the batches that you have opted for weekday or weekend or if you are someone who is watching the recorded lectures so ensure that you are attending your classes you go home you read the notes that's very important now one very important thing uh, i have seen a lot of students just studying watching the lectures reading 
and feeling as they are preparing for CFA. Guys, one important thing when it comes to the examination, when it comes to the examination, you would need to solve the MCQs. You will need to solve the questions. So it's very important right from the day one itself, you are trying to solve some questions so that you are better prepared for the examination. So I personally recommend when you have attended a class, let's say we are studying one subject of CFA, you have attended the classes, uh, you read the notes and then you solve the end of the chapter questions. You solve the end of the chapter questions from the CFA curriculum. So when you register with the CFA Institute in the official CFA curriculum, at the end of every chapter, they have some questions. Guys, being very honest, those are very important questions that you should be solving with the class itself. And then once you're done with a subject, you should be also solving the questions on the LMS. So at FPA LMS, we do have a subject wise test series for all the subject. So as you as you watch the recordings, you have read the notes, you have solved the curriculum questions. The next step is to solve the questions at FPA LMS. That is very important. So let's say in the initial six, six and a half months, you are able to cover the entire concepts. Now, see one challenge of the CFA level one examination is that all the 10 subjects get tested on the same day. Till now, most of the university exams that we have been giving, we give one exam at a time. But when it comes to CFA as a curriculum, you would see all the 10 subjects are tested on the same day. So that is why giving mock test and a thorough revision is something which is very much important. So I recommend in the last two or three months, depending on how much time you have, the focus should be on revision. Very important. Focus should be practicing questions. So when you register with the CFA Institute uh, on the CFA learning management system in the learning ecosystem, there is something known as a candidate resources. Again, those are very important questions that you should be solving so that to ensure you are well prepared for the exam. Apart from that, even in the FPA LMS, we give you additional questions to help you build the confidence. And apart from revision and practice, the most important thing is giving the mock test. The most important thing, the difference between the person who passes the exam and who doesn't passing the exam is how many mocks they have solved. If you are someone, I recommend to solve minimum seven, mock test, seven full length mock tests, like your actual exam. All the 10 subjects get testing. So if you are someone solving, let's say seven or mock tests, there's a very good probability that you are well prepared for the exam. Uh, try to score at least 70% and above in the mock test. So even at FPLMS, we give you a high number of mock tests, a lot of mock tests to help you prepare better. So this should be a strategy. Uh, so your level one preparation, you break it down. Initial six months is like attending your classes or watching the recorded classes, reading notes, practicing the curriculum questions, giving the subject wise test. The later two, two and a half months should be focused on revising, practicing more and more questions to improve your accuracy. Because that is what is very important and giving mock test. Uh, so this is how you should prepare. And uh, if you are someone who follows this, because I have, I have seen a lot of my students who are 18 year, 19 year old, who have followed this and within a span of eight months, they are, were not just able to clear the level one, but they were also able to score with a 90 percentile mark. So consistency is something which is very important to pass the exam. Now. Definitely CFA is an excellent course. There is no doubt about it. It's a gold standard certification. Now why you should be choosing let's say FPA EduTech uh, for your CFA training. So we are in the industry since last decade. Uh, our expertise, our niche area just lies finance and accounting training. Uh, all the faculties that take your classes are qualified. Uh, they have gone through the similar journey like you. They have passed CFA level one, level two, level three, they have gone through a similar journey like you. They understand what are the pain points during your preparation. So we have the one of the highest training hours in the industry for level one itself. We train you for around 220 hours for level two. We train you around 200 plus hours. So we cover every concept, every learning outcome statement in detail. Apart from that, uh, we have a learning management system. All the classes that you attend, they get recorded and they get uploaded on your learning management system. 
on the same day we do help you with the subject wise test that is very important we do help you with a lot of mock tests to help you prepare better for the exam we also give you the entire support uh, in the registration of the CFA Institute right from how to register for the CFA how to book your exam if you need any assistance in the scholarship application our team would be very happy to help you out then we also have a lot of tie-ups with a lot of companies where we can help you to provide the placements so as soon as you pass even the level one we can help you get the interviews we can help you in the placement part as well and then obviously one very important thing that comes into the mind when you are preparing for the exam many a times after you have attended the classes you will have a lot of doubts so that is why you get an access to a doubt solving number where you can get the unlimited doubt solving over phone call whatsapp zoom you can also come to our centers and get your doubts resolved because that is very important and we have a full-time trainers helping you prepare for the cfa exam so we wish you the best for your cfa exam cfa is definitely one of the best course that you can do personally when i did cfa even i was confused like you guys i was not sure looking at the investment which was involved but being honest uh, cfa gives you a lot of value addition uh, definitely if you are interested in finance investment you should consider doing the cfa course